Hello again, and welcome back to our Nulitaire playthrough of Liberty or Death. And once again, Nulitaire here means we're playing with zero players. That is to say, we're playing all the bots against each other. We're about five cards in to the year 1779. And this is the state of the board right now. I have a quick correction from the last session and that's it's there were some casualties in that session and i forgot to update the uh, cumulative casualties and i've done that now so cumulative british casualties is up to 11 and cumulative rebellion casualties is at eight okay so that is fixed all right let's carry on with the next card the next card is charles michel de Longlade. And the French are first eligible. Their side of the event says patriots and French rally to fight. Place three French regulars in Quebec or three militia in Northwest. We see the musket icon there under the French. So we have to check their special instructions, <clears throat> which says place militia only. If not possible, choose command and special activity instead. Okay, so they won't consider placing their own regulars up in Quebec. They'll only consider placing the three militia in the Northwest. <clears throat> but of course, we still have to check and see if they'll actually take this. Okay, so the answer to all these questions is no, except for perhaps that last bullet point. The Treaty of Alliance has been played, the event is effective, so they had to roll to see if uh, they get a five or higher. Well, they did that, and it's a two. So the answer to that question is no. So the French are not going to take the event, so we'll carry on with their flowchart. French resources are greater than zero. They're at 14 right now. The Treaty of Alliance has been played. 1d6 less than available French regulars. Well, there are two French regulars available. So they had to roll on that, and they rolled a three. So the answer is no. Rebel cubes and leader exceed British pieces in a space with both. Well, there are no spaces with rebel cubes uh, and uh, and British. Um, all the rebel cubes are up here in New York and New Hampshire and, uh, and the West Indies. And there are no British pieces in any of those spaces. So the answer is no. Therefore, they would like to march. Um, okay, so lose no rebel control is the only restriction we're given. So I'll mark all the pieces that can move according to that restriction, and then we'll see where they go. So it turns out that all the British regulars, excuse me, all the French regulars <laughs> in New York can march, and they can take all those Continentals with them because that wouldn't lose any control uh, in New York. And of course, Washington and Lausanne would go with them as well. Okay, so let's see where they want to go. So within that, march with as many French regulars and Continentals as possible to add rebel control, first in cities, within each first, that should say first in cities, then colonies, within each first of spaces with the most British pieces. Okay, so they want to move to a city. Well, there's only one city they can move to from New York Colony, and that's New York City. And they certainly would take control if they did that. Okay, so that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to march all those French regulars and all those Continentals, together with Washington and Lausanne, back into New York City to take control, once again, of that space. Both the French and the Patriots uh, pay a resource for that. And there are no more marchable French regulars on the map, so there's nothing more they can do with March. Okay, so they'd like to use a special activity now. Skirmish, in one space with both French and British, not selected for battle or muster first the West Indies. Well, that's clearly uh, New York City. It's the only possible space where there are um, French regulars and British pieces. And there was no battle or muster in this space because they marched in there. Okay, Skirmish says remove first a British fort, then the most British cubes. So they're going to try to remove the most possible, which means uh, the second part of the procedure comes to, 
comes into play. Remove two British cubes and one French regular. And we have to remember the cubes and forts are removed to casualties. So the French will skirmish in New York City to remove two British cubes and one French regular. And uh, they remove enemy pieces in the same order as friendly pieces are placed, which means they alternate regulars and Tories beginning with the fewest. So they'll remove a Tory and then a regular. So uh, one of each in this case. Those pieces are removed to casualties which moves cumulative British casualties up to 13 and cumulative rebellion casualties to 9. The next available faction can take the event or a limited command. The Patriots are next eligible. And again, their event here says place three French regulars in Quebec or three militia in Northwest. Well, looking at their event or command, uh, instructions, the second bullet point, event places underground militia in at least one active support or village space with none. And this event would do that. It would place underground militia in Northwest and there are villages there. Uh, because anytime uh, militia or war parties come on the board, they come on underground. So the Patriots are gonna take the event and place three militia in the Northwest. The next card is Indians help British raids on Mississippi. And the Indians are first eligible. Their half of the event says, increases force level, British place a total of three British regulars and or Tories in Southwest. Indians uh, aren't interested in doing that. Um, however, the last bullet point did come into effect. The event is effective and there are four or more villages on the map. So they had to roll, uh, but they rolled a four. So they're not going to take the event. We carry on with the flow chart. Support plus a D6 is greater than opposition. Yes, uh, opposition is uh, eight greater than, uh, sorry, support is eight greater than opposition right now. So uh, the role is irrelevant. Gather would place two or more villages. Yes, it would. There's uh, space in Quebec for a village and enough uh, war parties there. And there's space in New Jersey for a village and enough war parties there. So gather could place um, at least two villages here. So the Indians are going to gather. Place villages where room and three or more war parties, two or more of corn planters in the space, first with the Indian leader. Okay, so the first thing they're going to do is gather in Quebec and New Jersey. Uh, they'll remove two war parties in Quebec to put in the village there, and they'll remove only one in New Jersey since corn planters in that space. And we remember that Corn planters' capability is gather builds villages for one war party in the space. Also, uh, the Indians don't have to pay for the gather in Quebec because that's in in an Indian reserve province, so that's free. But they will have to pay for the one in New Jersey, so it'll cost them one resource to do this. There are no more places where they can place villages, so we carry on with the gather command. Then place war parties at villages. First, where enemies. Ah, well, there is a village space with some enemies. There are the Northwest, where those pa Patriot militia were just placed. So Indian Bot is going to gather in the Northwest now as well. And that means they can, they have to pay a resource for this because even though it's Indian Reserve, it's not the first one. They already got their free Indian Reserve with uh, Quebec. So they'll pay a resource for this and they'll put in the three war parties that they just removed for placing those villages. The Indians have only selected three spaces so far. The gather has a maximum of four. So they can select another space. Okay, we were in the second bullet point. Place war parties at villages, first war enemies. Then were no underground war parties. Well, that would be the Southwest. There are no underground war parties there. But unfortunately, they're out of war parties now. So they can't, uh, they can't place any more. Okay, so on to the next bullet point. If any village is available, place war parties. Ah, uh, well, they can't place any war parties. So on to the next bullet point. Then if no more war parties are available. Okay, that is the case. In one village space, move in all adjacent war parties possible without adding any rebel control, then flip them underground. Okay. 
Well, Southwest is a space that has some villages that is yet to be selected. So they would like to move in adjacent war parties and flip them underground, which would mean the one there goes underground too. It also means that this lonely war party in Florida will move. It likes to move to the Southwest. On second thought, that's not actually correct because Indian bots gather priorities, say, move in all adjacent active war parties possible without adding any rebel control, then flip them underground. So actually, this, this <laughs> lonely war party in Florida uh, is still going to just sit there because <laughs> it's not active. Okay, but there is an active war party here in Northwest. Okay, and even though a uh, gathering happened there, uh, that war party was already in the space, so, it's, so it can move. It'll move over to the Southwest and go underground. And also, the, uh, the war party that's there will go underground. That is now the last space they can select for March. So they're gonna carry on with a special activity. They'd like to warpath. If Indian resources equal zero, they don't. They're at five. Uh, trade if possible. Otherwise, war path. First to remove a fort, then most rebel pieces within that first in a province with one or more villages than elsewhere. Well, war path requires a location with underground war parties and rebellion pieces. And there's only one location that's northwest. So they're going to use war path there. And we're told... First remove a fort, well, there's no fort there. Then most rebel pieces. Okay, so they want to maximize the removal of rebellion pieces. That means the second part of the procedure comes into effect. Activate two underground war parties, remove one of the two, and remove two rebellion units. Okay, cubes and forts go to casualties, but there aren't any cubes or forts in this case. So Indians will skirmish in Northwest. They'll activate two of their underground militia and remove one of them in order to remove two of those militia. The British are up next. They can either take the event or a limited command. Well, they don't want to take the event. We see that sword icon under the British flag there. So that means they'll automatically skip checking uh, if they'll take the event. Okay, so we carry on with their flow chart. British resources greater than zero. Yes, they are at seven. Ten or more British regulars on the map. Actually, no, they're still struggling to get their regulars on the map. Most of them are in the available forces spot, so they don't quite have ten yet. Available British regulars greater than a D6. Well, yes, there's a whole bunch of them up there. So they're going to muster. All right, place regulars first in neutral or passive. Within that, first to add British control. Then where Tories are the only British units, then elsewhere within each first and highest population. Well, there's all, that, that narrows it down to one space. It's got to be Pennsylvania. That's a neutral or passive space where adding their six regulars would give them control. And it's a two-population space, so that's you know, the maximum uh, highest population you can get. There are other places um, you know, that are two-population where adding six British regulars would give them control, like New York and Massachusetts, for example. But those are not neutral or passive. Those are active. And there's also New York City, which is passive, but adding six regulars there wouldn't be enough to give them control, so they don't want that either. Uh, therefore, Pennsylvania is the only spot on the board where, uh, this, yeah, where the priorities here are met. So they're going to choose Pennsylvania for their limited command and put in six regulars. British bot paid one resource for that. Uh, they can't select any more spaces for muster because this is a limited command, but there are more things they could potentially do there. So let's see. Uh, second bullet point. Then place Tories, first war regulars of the only British cubes. Within that, first war regulars were just placed. Okay. Well, they'll place two Tories in there as well. And, of course, this is free since they've already paid for the space. There's still more they could possibly do in Pennsylvania using muster, so we carry on again. So we're on the third bullet point now. Then in one space, first one already selected above, if opposition greater than support plus a D3, well, support is still quite a bit higher than opposition, so that's not true. 
or no British Ford is available. That's not true either. There's one British Ford available. So they're not going to reward loyalty. Instead, if no reward loyalty, place a fort in a colony with five or more British cubes and no British fort. Well, Pennsylvania is a colony and it's got five or more British cubes in it, so they'll put a fort in there, which means that they will have to uh, replace three British cubes with a fort. And of course, we remove friendly pieces starting with the most, alternating, uh, sorry, we remove um, regulars and Tories alternating back and forth starting with the most in the space. So it'll go one regular, one Tory, one regular. And they'll put a fort in there. The next card is Waxhaw's Massacre. And the Patriots are first eligible. Uh, this turns out to be a pretty complex uh, turn. So let me walk you through what's, uh, what's happening here. So the... Uh, the rebellion side of this event says Patriot Rage, Patriots Free March 2, and Free Battle in one space. Place two propaganda there, shift one level toward neutral. Okay, well, I, you know, considering this event, I at first thought, well, you know, probably the Patriots don't want to do this march in battle if they can help it. I mean, they're... Their biggest force is here in New York City, and the only place that those pieces could march to are New Jersey or New York. So, I mean, they could march into New Jersey and do a free battle there, but New Jersey's at neutral. So that bit about, you know, placing two propaganda and shifting one level toward neutral, eh, that would be kind of lost there. Uh, and, and they'd probably really like to use this event to to neutralize some support. So then I thought, well, maybe they could just select a space like, say, North Carolina or South Carolina, you know? And remembering that, um, <clears throat> you know, any part of an event that can't be accomplished is just ignored. So I was thinking, well, they, maybe they just pick South Carolina, for example. And they say, okay, well, free march to that space. Well, we can't. There's no way to do it. And then free battle there. Well, we can't. There's no way to do it. So we just ignore those bits, throw in the two propaganda markers, and shift it one, one step toward neutral. But I actually don't think that's the way it works. So I went to the rule book again and, and, and looked at this paragraph once again, 5.1.3. An executed event's text that can be implemented must be. If not all of its text can be carried out, implement that which can. Okay, so all that can <laughs> talk in there. <laughs> makes me think that the way to interpret that correctly is to say that if the Patriots take this event, then they have to do a free march to a space, and then they have to do a free battle in there, okay? Because those things can be carried out. Um, and uh, the, the point is that right now they can march. Marches are possible right now, and battles are possible after that march. And so they must do that if they're going to take this event. They can't just select a place like South Carolina and say, okay, we're now going to march there. Oh, we can't. Now, you have to figure out what the possibilities are before selecting the space. And uh, you have to pick a space, if possible, that you can march into, and if possible, can battle there uh, after that march. So that's the way I'm interpreting this, and I think that's the correct way to do it. They can't simply choose a space and uh, chuck two propaganda markers in there and shift it uh, toward neutral. They have to, if possible, do the free march and the free battle too. Okay, so with that in mind, now looking at their event or command space, will they take this? Well, the very first bullet point, support is greater than opposition and event shifts support opposition in rebel favor. Well, sure it does. Um, because of that last bit. Shift one level toward neutral. So as long as they select a space here to march and battle in, that space will be shifted one level toward neutral. So if that space, so long as that space is at support, either passive or active, then it will in fact shift uh, support opposition in the rebel favor. So I think that first bullet point tells us that the Patriots are going to take this. 
So with that in mind, we also need to remember uh, from the rule book, this is uh, 8.3.5, events who, what, and where. This bullet point, if a non-player faction executes an event due to one of the event or command questions on the flowchart, which is the case here, select as many spaces as possible that match that question before selecting other spaces. Okay, so we have to pick a space that matches that question. That is to say, one that really will shift support or opposition in the rebel favor. Okay, then this next bullet point. Select spaces for shifts and support or opposition for 8.3.6 below. Well, that's over here. 8.3.6. Rebellion factions, they want to shift for the highest gain in opposition, then the highest loss in support. So they want to pick a space that will have the highest loss in support from all of the possible spaces where they could use this event. We also need to keep in mind this bullet point. For any choices as part of free commands, including limited commands or special activities, use that faction's priorities. For multiple free commands, such as march then battle, which is what we're doing in this case, use the priorities for the first. Where the priorities are not applicable, choose pieces per 8.1.2 and spaces randomly. Okay, so I think what all this boils down to is that we need to use the march priorities for the Patriots. And go through them until we find a space that has some support in it that they can march to. Um, and of course, we want the highest support possible. So it's not just finding a space, it's finding the highest space. Uh, where they can march to. Then we'll march them there and do a free battle there and then put in the two propaganda markers and shift it toward neutral. Okay, so the march says lose no rebel control, leave one active Patriot unit with each Patriot fort and one Patriot unit, if possible underground militia, where no active opposition. So I'll mark all the pieces that can move according to those priorities and then we'll see if they can move to a space that has um, support. So now I've marked all the pieces that can move. Uh, the militia in New Hampshire can move. The two Continentals have to stay there because they're active and uh, Patriot Bot wants to leave an active piece uh, which, with each fort, so you can't move those. Uh, the militia in New York can move. It's not active, so it doesn't have to stay with those forts. The militia in, in the Northwest can't move because that space is not at uh, active opposition, so it has to stay there. Um, and here's a bunch of pieces in New York City that can move. They can't lose control there, so they have to leave behind at least seven pieces. But the rest of them could move. Okay, so now, remembering that we're trying to accomplish this goal of shifting support and opposition in rebel favor. And uh, what the event does is shift one level toward neutral. That means that in order for this march to accomplish that goal, the march has to be into a space that has some support in it uh, in order to neutralize that support. That's the only way that uh, it's gonna manage to shift support opposition in the rebel favor. So that means that these pieces in New York City are not going to do this march. New York City is only adjacent to New York Colony and New Jersey, neither of which is at support. So we can forget about that as a possibility. So the only options left are New, uh, New Hampshire, that one militia could move up into Quebec City, where there is support. Okay. So that's a possibility. And we have this one militia in New York Colony, which could move into Pennsylvania where there's support, or it could move into Connecticut, Rhode Island, where there is support. Okay, but again, remembering that this is an event that shifts support or opposition, and so the executing faction wants to maximize that. Uh, therefore, Quebec City will not be chosen here because shifting that one level toward neutral will only affect uh, support by bringing it down one. Whereas shifting support one step toward neutral in Connecticut, Rhode Island, or in Pennsylvania 
will affect total support by two. So that means that we can forget about New Hampshire. Uh, therefore, the only piece that could possibly move here for this event, given all these priorities, is that one militia from New York. And it could go either to Pennsylvania or to Connecticut, Rhode Island. Um, either way, it would be the same amount of shift in uh, total support. So um, Patriot Bot's going to choose randomly from those two, and they rolled a 1-2, which gives them Pennsylvania. So after all that, <laughs> uh, I think what happens is the Patriots take the event, they march that single militia from New York into Pennsylvania, they'll free battle there, which we'll have to figure out how that works, and uh, then they'll be able to place their two propaganda and shift that one space toward neutral. Okay, so let's do the march. Well, well, wait. We got to make sure that this actually is. I forgot about this part. <laughs> we got to make sure that this actually is a march that is acceptable to the patriots. Um, right now, it's it's the only one that'll accomplish their goal. Well, that's not quite right. We could still consider the New Hampshire one if this one doesn't work, but this is the only one that'll accomplish it to the maximum amount. So it says, moving the largest groups first, add rebel control to two spaces, first more villages, then cities, then elsewhere within that, where largest population, include most French regulars possible. Well, obviously they can't take control of either Pennsylvania or Connecticut or Rhode Island with a single militia. So that's not good enough for them to select this. Okay, so the next bullet point. Then get one militia, underground if possible, into each other space with none. First to change control of most population, then elsewhere. Well, okay. Well, this, moving that one militia from New York to Pennsylvania or to Connecticut, Rhode Island, would accomplish this. It would get one militia, and an underground one even, into each other space with none. There are no underground militia in Pennsylvania or Connecticut, Rhode Island. First to change control of most population, then elsewhere. Well, it won't change control of any population. Um, okay. So, again, they're going to choose randomly between Pennsylvania and Connecticut, Rhode Island. They get Pennsylvania. Okay. So now <laughs> we're going to execute this event uh, by marching from New York into Pennsylvania. Now we resolve the battle in the space. And, you know, at first I thought this was this is kind of a suicidal thing to do. <laughs> but not really. I mean, the thing is that Militia there is, is underground. You know, I mean, if we look at um, March, sorry. Um, when they marched in there, it says, if destination is a British-controlled city and moving group plus British cubes there exceed three, activate moving militia. Well, this isn't a British-controlled city. It's a colony. So that militia gets to stay underground through that march. Uh, and that makes all the difference in the world because... Um, underground uh, militia can't be removed through battle. And they actually even add to loss levels. By having a, a piece underground, it adds one to the loss level. So it's not insane, <laughs> you know, for the Patriots to initiate, to initiate a battle here. Uh, it's certainly not suicidal either. Okay, so let's work out the battle. The um, attacking side course, is the, uh, the Patriots. And by the way, they can initiate battle here. I mean, battle says, it just says spaces with Patriot and Royalist pieces. It doesn't say they have to be active, uh, Patriot and Royalist pieces. So they can initiate a battle here. That's perfectly fine. Um, okay, so the Patriot force level uh, will be zero. Okay. And the British force level, they're defending here, will be six. They count all their cubes plus their fort. They have five cubes plus the fort, that's six. So that means that the British are going to be able to roll two dice, and the Patriots will roll zero. Well, the British rolled extremely high. They got a six. Uh, but again, that's it's not going to matter because it's not going to do anything. There are no pieces for the Patriots to remove. But in any case, let's run through it to make sure uh, that's the case. And also see if 
the British actually lose any pieces here. Okay, so let's do the defender loss level first. So the British are the defenders in this case. Um, the Patriots have zero because they rolled, they didn't roll any dice. So at least half attacking cubes regulars, no. At least one attacking side piece is underground. Yes, they have an, the uh, Patriots have an underground militia there, so that's a one. At least one attacking leader, no. Attacking, including French with Lausanne, no. British attacking in blockaded city, no. British attacking West Indies, no. Per defending fort, ah, well, there is a fort there. So that neutralizes that underground militia. So now they're back to zero. Indians defending an Indian reserve, no. Patriots, French defending with Washington, no. Okay, so the defender loses zero. The attacker, okay, so the British rolled six. So the six to start with. At least half defending cubes are regulars, yes. So that makes it seven. At least one defending side piece underground, no. At least one defending leader, no. British defending a blockaded city, no. British defending West Indies, no. Per defending fort, yes. So that adds another one. So they end up with eight uh, total. Uh, but again, the removal priorities have it that uh, underground militia never get removed this way. So nothing happens. So there was a great big battle in Pennsylvania where nothing happened. <laughs> but it does satisfy the requirements of the card. Patriots free march two and free battle in one space. Now they place their two propaganda markers and shift that space one level toward neutral. That now brings total support down to 22. All right, so the Patriots took the event. That means the French can take a command and special activity. So looking at the French bot flow chart, French resources greater than zero. Yes, they are at 13. The Treaty of Alliance has been played. A D6 is less than the available French regulars. There are two French regulars available. So they had to roll on that. They rolled a four. So the answer is no. Rebel cubes plus leader exceed British pieces in a space with both. Yes, New York City is such a space. The rebel cubes clearly outnumber uh, the British cubes there. Therefore, we're going to see a battle. Select all spaces with British, where rebel force level, including continentals, if possible, plus modifiers, exceed royalist force level, plus modifiers, within that first and highest population. Well, the only possible space they can choose for battle, it's got to be a space or West Indies with French and royalist pieces. The only space with French and royalist pieces is New York City. So that's the only possible space where they can do this. And I did the math on this just to make sure. The rebellion comes out with 21. They have 18 force level for all those cubes there, uh, plus another three mo for modifiers, so 21. And the British side comes out with seven. Six for the force level there and, and another one for modifiers. So uh, 21 to seven. Clearly, uh, the French are going to uh, select this space for battle. Okay, but we don't do the battle yet. It says, uh, it, it simply says to select the space first and then the next bullet point, first execute a special activity. Then we'll resolve all the battles. Okay, so there's gonna be a special activity first and that's gonna be naval pressure. Add one blockade first in a city selected for battle, then at most support. Ah, so what the French are gonna do, very sneaky, <laughs> is use French, uh, sorry, use naval pressure, move F and I up one level, and blockade New York City before initiating a battle there. And that actually will make it, uh, uh, make the modifiers even worse for the British. So now we've resolved the battle. Um, both the Patriots and the French have to pay a resource for this because they're both going to be involved. And so we first figure out how many dice they're going to roll. Uh, well, the Patriot force level, sorry, the Rebellion force level here is 18. We count all of the French regulars, and since the, uh, since the Patriots are paying, we count all the Continentals too. It's an equal number of those. So that's 18. Uh, so they get to roll their full three dice. You divide 18 by three, round it down, but a maximum of three. So they roll three. 
The British have a force level of six. They count all of their cubes. Uh, Tories up to the number of regulars. So they count all of those. That six uh, divided by two is two. So they get to roll two dice. So I already rolled that. And the British did very well. They rolled a, a six, the most they could. And the rebellion rolled seven. Okay. So let's first figure out the defender loss level here. So the rebellion rolled a seven. At least half attacking cubes are regulars. Yes, half of them are French regulars. So they're now at an eight. At least one attacking side piece underground. No, at least one attacking leader. Yes, both Washington and Lausanne are there. So that makes it now a nine. Attacking including French with Lausanne. Yeah, Lausanne is there. So that acts, that adds another. So that's now 10. British attacking in a blockaded city. No, the city is blockaded, but the British are defending. British attacking in West Indies, no. Per defending fort, there are no forts. Indians defending in Indian Reserve, no. Patriots, French defending with Washington. No, Washington is attacking in this case. Okay, so the total defender loss level here is 10. Okay, so the Royalists will have to remove 10 pieces worth of damage. They alternate between the uh, regulars and the Tories. And the regulars are worth two each, and the Tories are worth one each. So that's going to be uh, almost all the pieces, right? It's two, and then three, five seven, nine, yeah, they have to remove them all. Okay, so they lose all of those pieces to casualties. Okay, I'll leave those separate for now so we can make the uh, changes in totals later. All right, well, let's see if they strike a blow to the, to the rebellion while they're on their way out the door. <laughs> okay. So the attacker loss level modifiers, well, the British rolled a six to begin with. At least half defending cubes are regulars. Yes, so that's a seven. At least one, uh, at least one defending side piece underground, no. At least one defending leader, no. British defending in a blockaded city, yeah. The French just blockaded it. So that takes that away, they're back down to six. British defending in West Indies, no. Per defending fort, no. So the attacker has to lose six, a total of six. They alternate between the uh, French regulars and the Continentals, and those are worth two each. So two, four, six. Two French regulars and one Continental are removed. All right, that's the Battle of New York City. The British removed a total of six pieces, and the Rebellion removed a total of three pieces. So that shifts cumulative British casualties up to 19, and cumulative Rebellion casualties to 12. Now we need to consider win the day. Clearly the Rebellion wins this battle. And the loser did remove a cube, and at least two pieces. Therefore, um, the rebellion gets to shift opposition by half the number of pieces lost by the loser. Since the loser lost six pieces, that means the rebellion gets three shifts in support of opposition. And since Washington is in the space, that gets doubled. Double rebellion win the day shift in the space. So it's six. The rebellion gets six shifts in support opposition. So first thing they do, use one of those to shift New York City to active opposition. That gives them an additional two to opposition. And that's the maximum they can do there. The rules tell us that uh, if all shifts are not possible in the battle space, then they can use the remaining shifts in adjacent spaces. Well, the only spaces adjacent to New York City are New York Colony, which is already at active opposition, and New Jersey. So they'll use two shifts in New Jersey to put that at active opposition, which gives them another two 
moving total opposition up to 20. They're catching up on total support. Um, and they have to just lose the other three uh, shifts. There's, there's no adjacent spaces. But also the Patriots get to do a free rally. If the rebellion is the winner, Patriots may free rally in any one eligible space, and French may move any blockades from the battle city to another city. Um, so we have to consider that too. The Patriots get to do a free rally anywhere, and uh, the French can consider moving their blockade to another city. Curiously, the French bot um, battle procedures don't mention anything about winning the day and how to uh, prioritize this free rally and free uh, movement of a blockade. But uh, if we flip over and look at the battle procedures for the Patriots, it does say, it says, if win the day, Patriots free rally in one space per below, and French move blockade to city with more support. So I thought that was kind of curious, um, why the Patriots give specific instructions, and they even give instructions about what the French should do. That's kind of strange. <laughs> Shouldn't that be on the French side? So that's just not uh, said here. So I went to the rule book. Um, you know, some oftentimes, as I've said before, the rule book will have more specific instructions or more detail about how the bots behave. And it does. It says here, for each space where the rebellion side wins the day, and this is under French battle, okay. The Patriots execute a free rally command in one space. For each city where the rebellion side wins the day, the French may move any blockades from that city to another city with more support. So it is the same instructions that we see on the Patriot side. It's just not written on this side. Okay, so that, that seems to me like another oversight. That really should be written here. Then resolve all battles, and then write that bit about you know, if they win the day. You know, you could just take what it says over here, uh, if win the day, and just, you know, copy it, paste it over here. <laughs> okay. So we'll essentially do exactly what it says here. If win the day, Patriots free rally in one space per below, so they'll use their rally um, priorities, and French move blockade to city with more support. Okay, so let's take care of that rally first. So first, place a fort in each space with four or more Patriot units in room. Well, there aren't any forts available for the Patriots. They're all, in the, they're all on the board. So next point, then place militia. First at each Patriot fort with no other rebellion pieces. Well, there are a couple of spaces like that. Massachusetts and New York both have forts and no other rebellion pieces. So they would like to use their free rally in one of those two spaces. Okay, but we're not given any other priorities here that make a difference. So they choose randomly from those two spaces and they roll the 3-3. Three, 3-3 three. Three, three gives us Florida. Following that down, we get Massachusetts. So Patriot Bot will use its free rally to place four militia in Massachusetts. And of course, now they can consider replacing some of those with Continentals. So the third point, in the Patriot Fort space with most militia of those already selected for rally, replace all militia except one underground with Continentals. Okay, so they'll also, as part of this free rally, replace three of those militia with Continentals. Now we'll consider moving that blockade for the French. So we're told to uh, move it to a city with more support. Well, <laughs> New York is at active opposition, so... Um, any city with any support would be more than that. Okay, so there's several options here. Uh, Quebec City, Boston, uh, Norfolk, Charlestown, and Savannah all have two support. So they chose, have to choose randomly from those. They rolled a 3-2, which is uh, Pennsylvania, Norfolk. So they will move their blockade from New York City to Norfolk and neutralize that. Uh, support there. So the war is definitely beginning to shift in favor of the rebellion. Uh, support and opposition are now tied at 20. So that uh, one point of the game where support was way up there at like 34, while opposition was down here at like 12, uh, this is really a different story now. Uh, the rebellion has really uh, shifted this war in their favor. Okay, 
On to the next card. The next card is British Prison Ships, and the British are first eligible. Their side of the event says British efficiently deal with prisoners. Shift two cities, one level each, toward passive support. And now, um, looking at their command or event or command space here, event or command box, excuse me. The first bullet point: oppositions greater than support, and event shifts support opposition royal royalist favor. Well, this event does shift to opposition in royalist favor. That's for sure. But opposition is not greater than support. As I just said, they're tied right now at 20 each. So it seems kind of like a technicality, but they're not going to take this according to that uh, priority. Okay, the last bullet point also is possible. Uh, British control five or more cities. Well, they control five cities. The event is effective. So they had to roll a d6, but they rolled a one. So that also is a no. Um, so the British are not going to take this event. So British resources greater than zero. Yes, they are at six. Ten or more British regulars on the map. No, there's actually only six British regulars on the map. So no. Available British regulars greater than a D6. Yes, there are lots of British regulars available. They're still trying to get pieces out on the map. So they would like to muster. So, as usual, place regulars first in neutral or passive, within that first to add British control, then more Tories are the only British units, then elsewhere, within each first in highest population. And as usual, that means they're looking for a neutral or passive space, where plopping in their six regulars will give them control, and they want to go with the highest population they can. Well, it turns out that there are no two population spaces uh, that fit the bill. All the two population spaces are either already under British control or are active, either active opposition or active support. Um, so that means they have to go for a one population space. And there are a couple they could, they could choose from. There's Georgia down here. Um, they can't choose Norfolk because that's blockaded. They can't muster in a blockaded space. Um, but New Jersey also is a possibility. They could uh, take control of that space. Well, no, um, that's not right. <clears throat> so just like in a previous episode in this series, I'm uh, coming to you from the future. <laughs> so I made a, a serious error in this turn. <clears throat> uh, you just heard me say that New Jersey is an option here for British muster, but that's not correct because... It's not at neutral or passive, it's active. So British bot would not select that space for muster. But in the, um, the a previous version of this video, uh, that's what British bot does uh, here. So I, made, so I made a serious error. And a, a, a viewer called me out on it. Uh, Christian Van Summeren, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, uh, pointed this out. At minute 48, I think the British will not muster in New Jersey, since it is active opposition, not neutral or passive. Also, I don't think they can place Tories in New Jersey. Now, both of those are totally uh, correct. So, um, so I made a, a serious blunder in, in working the, uh, the British bot here. So what I'm doing now is I'm, I've rewound, rewound the game uh, to this point, um, and I'm going to uh, fix this. Uh, fortunately, I hadn't, you know, shot any future videos, so it's not too big a problem this time uh, to go back and fix it. It's not nearly as big an issue as it was last time when I had to rewind, <laughs> uh, like, two and a half videos or so uh, and reshoot it all. Okay, so I've reset the board to where it was at this point in the game, and I'm going to uh, carry on from here correctly. Okay, so... The British cannot muster in New Jersey. Or to be more precise, the British can select New Jersey for muster, but British bot doesn't want to because the priorities say place regulars first in neutral or passive. So they want to select a neutral or passive space uh, first and foremost. That's the first priority. So that means that this muster should have happened in Georgia. That's the space on the map that satisfies their uh, main priorities. It is neutral or passive. It would add British control. 
And it's the highest population space um, that does that. It's only one population space, but there are no two population spaces that satisfy these requirements. Therefore, the British are going to uh, begin their muster by placing six regulars in Georgia. The next uh, part of muster, now that we place the regulars, is the second bullet point, then place Tories. First where regulars are the only British cubes, within that first where regulars were just placed. All right, well, there's only one space where regulars are the only cubes, and that's where they were just placed, in Georgia. So the British bot will put two Tories in Georgia. They don't have to pay more for this because they've already paid for that space. The next priority is to place Tories where it will change the most control. Well, now there's no place on the map where it's illegal to place Tories where it would change any control. So as uh, Christian Van Sumeren uh, pointed out also, Tories can't go into New Jersey because it's an act of opposition. Tories can be placed in any city or colony, not the West Indies, containing or adjacent to regulars or forts, not an act of opposition. All right, so the space has to be, uh, has to either have a fort or regular or be adjacent to a space with a fort or regular, and it can't be an act of opposition. So a British bot can't just put two Tories into New Jersey to take control of that. They also can't slap two Tories into New York to remove uh, Patriot or sorry, rebellion control there, because it's also an act of opposition. Same thing for Virginia. Okay, so um, <clears throat> they can't take control of any of those active opposition spaces. They can't put two Tories into Norfolk either. And it's actually not because it's blockaded. Uh, the blockades just stop the British from putting in regulars. It's still possible to put Tories in a blockaded city. However, that city is not adjacent to a space with British regulars or a fort. So that's not an acceptable place to put Tories either. Okay, so that priority uh, doesn't select any spaces. Then in colonies with less than five British cubes and no British fort. There are two possibilities here. Um, there is Maryland, Delaware. That is less than five British cubes, and there's no fort there. And that's an acceptable space. It's not at active opposition, and it's adjacent to a space that has British regulars or British port. So that's an acceptable space. And North Carolina is another possibility. If there's no fort there. There's less than five cubes. It's not at active opposition. It's adjacent to a space with a fort. Okay, those are the only two possible spaces here. And they have enough Tories to choose both of these spaces. And muster is a max of four. And they have enough resources. So they'll choose both of those spaces to add Tories. British bot has now run out of Tories. And they've also run out of priorities for selecting to muster. So the next part, uh, then in one space, first one already selected. If opposition is greater than support plus a D3, well, opposition and support are equal right now. So rolling on the D3 will only add to support, so obviously the opposition won't be greater than that. Or no British forts are available. That's true. There are no British forts available. So British bot would like to reward loyalty. So that means they need to select a space uh, that has a regular, a Tory, and control. And they can buy reward loyalty for one resource per level. And there's no shift limit on this. So since they're prioritizing a space that's already been selected, they would choose one of the three spaces where they've done muster so far. The only space that qualifies here is Georgia. It's under their control. They have at least one Tory and at least one regular. So they will spend two resources to shift Georgia to active support. That moves total support up to 22. So that's all for the British muster. Now they would like to use a special activity. They'd like to skirmish, um, but there's a problem. Skirmish requires a space with British regulars and rebellion pieces. And the only space like that is Pennsylvania. However, 
Uh, skirmish does not allow the, the removal of a, an underground militia. It only allows the removal of active militia. So skirmish is not possible uh, to remove any pieces here. So they'd rather use naval pressure. Ah, but wait, before we do it, <laughs> we have to remember how is the leader, and that means his leader capability, before executing a British special activity, first lower FNI one level. Okay, so that means FNI comes down one level and pulls that blockade off of Norfolk, which puts the support back in play. And that means total support goes up two more. Okay, now they do uh, naval pressure, which means since FNI is now at zero, they'll add 1d3 British resources. They roll the three, so they gain three resources. They're up to four. Indian bot is up next. They can take the event or a limited command. As a reminder, the event says shift two cities one level each toward passive support. But the Indians aren't interested in doing that. Uh, the first bullet point um, requires that opposition be greater than support, and it's not. Support is higher than opposition right now. The last bullet point did come into play. The event is effective. There are four more villages on the map, so they had to roll on that, uh, but they rolled a three. So the answer to all those questions is no. Support plus a d6 greater than opposition. Yes, no matter what the role is. Gather would place two or more villages. No, right now Gather would place one village. Or a d6 is less than the available war parties. No, there's only one war party available. So no matter what the role is, the answer is no. A space has war party and British regulars. No, there's no space with both war parties and British regulars right now. So the Indians would like to use March for their limited command. So it says, with underground, then active war parties, without moving last war parties from any village, removing last three war parties where gather can place a village or adding any rebel control. So as usual, I will mark all the pieces that can move according to that restriction, and then we'll see where they wanna go. So I've marked all the pieces that can move. There's an underground war party in the northwest, there's an underground war party in the southwest, and there's that lonely war party down in Florida. Those pieces can all move. Um, one war party has to stay behind in each of the northwest and the southwest because there are villages there. And five of those war parties with Corn Planter in New Jersey can move. Three have to stay behind because Gather could place a village in New Jersey. Okay, so where do they want to go? Second bullet point of March. If one or more villages are available, and there are, march to get three or more war parties in one additional neutral or passive space, space with room for a village. Well, the only space uh, where they could march in to get three or more war parties, that's neutral or passive, and has room for a village, is Pennsylvania. Okay, none of these, uh, none of the, neither of the war parties in the southwest or Florida could move uh, to make that happen. And so we have to consider this large group with corn planter. The only space adjacent to there that's neutral passive and has room for a village is Pennsylvania. But this means, you know, remembering the guidelines say we have to move as many pieces as possible uh, when, we're, when we're operating the bots. That means that war party from the Northwest will also move in there. And this will be their limited command. A couple things to note about that move. First of all, that one war party that moved from northwest gets to stay underground. Uh, and that's because marching only uh, forces war parties to go active when they're moving into a rebellion control colony. And this is not rebellion control. So that gets to stay underground. Also, the Indian bot had to pay a resource for this because even though one of the war parties came from an Indian Reserve province and the first uh, space selected for March where all originating from Indian Reserve provinces is free. They didn't all originate from there. Uh, most of them came from New Jersey, uh, which is not Indian Reserve, so they had to pay a resource for that. The next card is French Fleet Sails for the Caribbean. But I'm gonna end this video here. 
uh, and we'll pick it up again uh, next session. Um, and as usual, you know, if, you, if you're enjoying this, if you like this uh, content, consider giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see future things like this. Okay, I'll see you next time.